Greetings and welcome, my brothers and sisters. This video is a call to action for all in the body of Christ and for all who want to listen. I believe that we as Christians should purify ourselves and get right with the Lord. Judgment is imminent upon the earth, and we need to separate ourselves from the sheer wickedness of this world and come only to Jesus or we are at risk of being the backslidden, lukewarm church that will be vomited out of the Lord's mouth. We need to be the bride of Christ. If we do not take heed to the signs of these times that we are living in, the end days, Christ's soon return, if we do not pay heed to our Father, the Lord, Jesus Christ, who is one with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, if we do not take heed, and if we continue to be in sin, after being born again into a new wineskin, a new spirit, and fail to repent from our sins and turn away from them, and seek the Lord in forgiveness and humility, we, maybe, of those many Christians before Lord Jesus at judgment, where he told us in his word, Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. We must all take heed at this warning from Jesus. This is a warning to Christians. How many will the Lord cast away in this manner? He says, many. Why does he cast them away? Because he does not know them, and they practice lawlessness. What is lawlessness? Sin. 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. It is very simple. We must repent and turn from our sins. Falling on our faces before the Lord and confessing our sins, past and present, to forgive those who wronged us, and ask for forgiveness from those we have wronged, and seek the forgiveness grace and love of the Lord to fill our hearts. Only by turning from our sins of the past, not returning to them, and not sinning anew now, can we be considered to be the bride of Christ, who is described at Ephesians 5.27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The marriage of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, is to his holy and pure church, not to a backslidden or lukewarm one. The Revelation of Jesus Christ, 19.7-9 Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honour to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife, hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So we know the bride is holy and without blemish, clean in white and is righteous. This is a blessed bride, and it should be all of our goals as Christians and believers in Christ to be a holy bride for the Lord. We are told in the word that 1 Peter 1 16. Because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. And 1 Peter 1 15. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. 
To be holy as the Lord has called us to be as his church is to not sin. We should not sin. By our faith in the Lord and repenting of our sins, he forgave all of our trespasses. But we must not turn back to sin. Hebrews 6, 4 For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it, and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated, receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. When we continue in sin, we are again nailing Christ to the cross, our Lord and Saviour. Is he to save us from sin by his loving and holy sacrifice for us, just to turn right back to it? For those who hear the word and believe, not all are fruitful to God. If we abide in the world, if we abide in sin, then we are not abiding in the Lord. John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Jesus tells us if we abide in him, we will bear fruit and be pruned by the Father to grow further. The fruit is our works what we are to be judged on, the righteousness of the saints, when God refers to the holy, clean and spotless bride. If we continue to abide in the Lord and his word, and not sin, and separate ourselves from this world, we will bear much fruit. But if we fail to abide in the Lord and his word, we could become a withered branch that is thrown into the fire, to be condemned to hell for not producing fruit of good works, of righteousness. Now, we are not saved of our own works. We are saved by grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ, the only Savior for mankind. However, we will all be judged for our works, and we will all be before the judgment seat of Christ to give account of our lives at judgment. We are judged for our works. James 2.17 Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And James 2.24 You see then that a man is justified by works, not by faith only. What are our works? John 15.7 If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So we must abide in the Lord and have his word abide in us. This is further described in the parable of Jesus when we follow his teachings and build our spiritual houses upon the rock, not upon the sand, not upon the clay, not upon anything but the rock of the Lord's word. And our spiritual houses will not come crashing down when the storm, rain, wind and flood and persecutions come to beat upon them. So we should bear fruit for our Lord and abide in him, as the bride of Christ will do so in our Lord Jesus. We cannot be abiding in Jesus if we are abiding in sin. This is clear. 
I am bringing these words to convict who will hear and reflect my recent growings, understandings, and revelations. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine but the Father's who sent me. Earlier in my faith, I often told God I loved him, but I started to realize if I wasn't following his teachings and commandments, then I was fooling myself. I realized I need to be disciplined and put away the things of the world that were holding me back from growing in the Lord to really purify myself to the Lord. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. This is money or greed. This is material success idolized so often and so popular in this world. It is sinful to serve, and it is an idol of the devil. This verse is the same as other sins. We cannot form idols of sin that we serve, for we cannot serve two masters. If we are under God, then we should be dead to sin and write ourselves to the Lord, trying our best to be holy as he is holy. If we serve sin, then we could become the withered branch who will be cast into the fire. We may be those who the Lord tells at judgment. Many Christians, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, practices of sin. We could be the lukewarm who are vomited out of God's mouth because we are neither hot or cold. If we serve sin, we are not abiding in the Lord and his word. We are serving this world, the pleasures and lusts of it, the idols of it, and the ruler of this wicked world, Satan, the devil. This is abundantly clear. A soft stance on sins, thinking we can bargain and continue to live in sins after we were all saved from certain death by our great and holy Lord's sacrifice. This is painful to him as if we are nailing him back on the cross. That's what the word tells us. What does our loving father do when he sees us from heaven and is with us in our bodies? And after he has saved us and forgiven us our sins, sees us continue in the same sins, finding new ones, making and serving idols in this world. We are told the Lord is a jealous God. We are meant to be his holy, faithful, pure and righteous bride. But when we prefer to seek and appease the wickedness of this world, instead of seeking him, abiding in him and his word, we cause him pain, dirtying ourselves with the lusts of the world, not setting ourselves apart from it and growing in Christ. I tell you this, my brothers and sisters, not to lecture you from any kind of superior position, because I am not. I am weak myself. I am reminded of this almost daily. But I want to relay the things that I have been strongly thinking about lately, and my recent journeys in fully seeking to purify myself from this wicked world, to our holy Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I know the Lord saved me from certain death. I was a goner. I would have died in my sins and gone to hell. No question. I realized that as I grew in my love for him, that to truly show my love for the Lord, I must abide in him. Meaning I need to fully detach from the wickedness and worldly things that occupied my attention and time and focus and energy, draining me. And I must abide in him and his word. These are the two things we must do, as Jesus tells us for our branch to bear fruit. To abide in him is to not be in sin. To try our best to not be sin. 
to be holy. The bride is pure, holy, in white, clean and righteous. We must seek to be the Lord's bride, His true and holy church, fully born again, in a state of love, awaiting the return of our Lord, receiving upon us the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God who can teach us all things, in a new wineskin, with our old man and our old woman firmly nailed to the cross at our Lord's victory over sin. We are born again and are new men and new women, strong in our faith in the Lord and the Holy Spirit, the helper who teaches us all things, the Spirit of God, Jesus and God the Father. He resides in us, with us, in our body, the temple of God. Jesus tells us his home is with us, he and the Father, if we love him and keep his word. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, joined as one with our soul, body and mind. To grow in Christ, we must turn away from sin and the wicked ways of the world and abide in the word of God and in seeking Jesus, our Saviour and Bridegroom. The unimaginable joy and love that awaits in heaven is not something I am always focused on, since I am focused on here and now and in, and in improving myself in the Lord, in my own spiritual journey. It is unimaginable compared to our lives here. The joy of heaven is joy you could have never imagined. And it is not just for 70 or 100 years. It is for an eternity with our true family and Jesus Christ, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. We are told in Hebrews 10.26, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. There it is clearly and straightforwardly. We must turn from all sin in our lives and purify ourselves before the Lord. It is truly the call. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This stands not only to the unsaved, those in the world in darkness, as to the real light and only Saviour, but to all in the faith who should never take their spiritual relationship with the Lord for granted. We are told that pride comes before the fall, and that the exalted will be humbled, and that the humbled will be exalted. We can fall at any point if we lose sight of the Lord. Remember, we walk a thin and narrow path, which is entered by the narrow gate. This way of faith in Christ is the only way to life for our souls in this world. The other path is broad with a wide gate and leads to destruction. Death for our souls in the lake of fire for an eternity. If we continue in sins, then Jesus' sacrifice and shed blood for our sins covers us no more. And we have, as Hebrews 10.26 says, a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. Remember the leader of our enemy. The spiritual wickedness in this world is Satan. Before his fall, bringing one third of the host of heaven with him into rebellion against God. His name was Lucifer, and he was an angel of God. He fell like lightning. We are told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12 If you are already saved, that is truly great. If you are unsaved, I implore you to come to the Lord right this day. The judgment of God is imminent upon this world. Pray with an open and honest heart to God to reveal to you the truth, and He will. Those who are saved... Know that if we continue in sins, we are at risk of hellfire. This is certain. We do not want to be those who Jesus tells, many who call his name, 
This is many Christians. In this day and age we are talking about. We do not want to be told we are those who practice lawlessness. Lawlessness is sin. The law is given not to restrain us. It is a guardrail so that we do not fall ov- over the cliff into perdition. It is for our benefit and the world's benefit. But what does the world and many in the faith do? They do as thou will. Do you know that this is the law of the Satanists? Those who worship Satan as God in this world. And there are far more of them than you may think. Their law is, do as thou will. That shall be the whole of the law. Look to the world and you can see this embrace. You can see evil, wickedness and the hand of the devil everywhere. The spirit of the Antichrist is everywhere. But do not fear the ruler of this world or the death of your flesh. We are children of God and God is in control. We are bought and paid for by our dearly beloved Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He is our bridegroom. But to be the bride, we must be purified from sin, abiding in the Lord and his word, not this world and the idols of it. Romans 12, 11, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 1 John 5, 18 We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding, that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. If we are truly born of God, we will not sin. We will turn from it and purify ourselves, repenting and seeking forgiveness, and not continuing in sin, trying our best to do so. When we keep ourselves pure in Jesus, the wicked one does not touch us. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Do you hear this? The whole world. The only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, has come and saved the world. All who believe in him, but all who refuse to believe that God sent his only son into the world, stands condemned already. This is all who have not come to faith in Jesus Christ. Do not be deceived by placating preaching of another gospel to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. We do not serve the same God as the Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, or any other beliefs. Without the son, Jesus Christ, you do not have life. You are not saved. There is no appropriation for your sins by your faith in Jesus Christ. You will die in your sins. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes to the Father but through him. John 3, 16-18 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Case closed. Also see 1 John 2, 21-26. Let me make this very clear. Do not stand for those who distort the gospel into an all religions are one, new world order, satanic religion. No, without Jesus Christ, you do not have God the Father. This does not mean God will forget Israel. But the Jewish today are in rebellion against God, 
for rejecting their Messiah, and only a remnant will be saved who come to faith in Jesus Christ. And this is the same with all nations. Remember that a pa- the path to destruction is broad, and many enter through it. It is a wide gate. Brothers and sisters, with absolute certainty and with no doubt, let me tell you that we are in the last days. God's judgment is imminent upon the earth. The judge stands at the door. The great tribulation is soon upon us. Evil will grow. If you have not confessed your faith in Jesus Christ, do so today, for tomorrow is not guaranteed. Give your life to Jesus Christ and truly be born again, leaving behind your old self and journeying anew in the body of Christ, our beloved and almighty Lord and Saviour. To do this, we're already told how. Seek the Lord, abide in His Word, abide in Him. Pray and seek, we are told he who seeks will find. He who knocks, it will be opened, and he who asks will receive. So just seek and keep seeking and you will find and the Lord will come and the Father and the Holy Spirit will make their home inside you, the temple of God in your body and the Lord will be with you wherever you go and he will never leave you. But stay true to him and do not deny him. Now, I want to show you the importance of purifying ourselves and being free from sin. Jesus says in Matthew 18, 18, If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed, rather than having two hands or feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes, to be cast into hellfire. Now first off, let nobody convince you otherwise. If you are unsaved, have not found faith in Jesus, or are an unprofitable member in the body of Christ, so that your branch withers, and are in sin and cannot separate from the worldly things, you will be cast into hellfire. Hell is real. The lake of fire is very real. I'm not going to be sugarcoating anything. I'm just speaking the truth of the word. Fearing God is the beginning of wisdom. One of our greatest purposes on earth is to save people from darkness who do not know the truth, who are under the grip of evil and the spirit of the Antichrist, but who do not know it. To save them from eternal damnation is one of our highest callings. So when deniers of the word of God, wolves in sheep's clothing, proclaim there is no judgment of God, people won't be going to hell, the lake of fire for all eternity, the wicked and ungodly. When they please the politically correct crowd and are ashamed by the word of God and do not preach repentance, and the coming judgment of sin, and even say that Christians worship the same God as other beliefs, denying their Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? Without Jesus Christ, there is no salvation for souls. Do not accept another gospel of Jesus Christ. Do not heed the deniers of the Holy Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is one with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. God is three parts, but is one. And he makes his home with us by the Holy Spirit when we are born again by faith in Jesus Christ. The great distortion of the word is coming more and more. The placation and satisfying the desires of the wicked world is the teaching of the preachers who do not speak against sin, who do not make repentance and holiness their focus. Now, I haven't been to church since primary school. I learned by reading myself and from the works of my brothers and sisters online. But I can see the distortion people take with the word. They do not take the whole counsel of God. They take one part, but ignore the others. It's very important 
to not ignore what the Word of God is saying. And it is far too common, even among those who profess faith in Jesus, those deniers of core and fundamental aspects of faith in God, who God is, the Holy Trinity, judgment, salvation, the appropriation of sins, all of these things. The bride of Christ is holy in white, clean and pure. The bride that Christ is coming for is waiting for their bridegroom and has oil in their lamps. They have not neglected their Lord. They have not neglected to have oil in their lamps, to be spiritually ready and prepared for the imminent return of their Lord and Saviour. Those who attend the wedding supper must have a wedding garment, meaning they must be purified from sin, separated from the world and abiding in the Lord and His Word. This is the church that should be raised, a holy church for a holy God. Do not give heed to the satanic one-world religion of the Pope, the Jews, the Muslims, and other faiths combined together as one into one global religion. This is warned of in the Bible, prophesied to occur. Jesus Christ is the only Saviour. Do not deny his name. Do not deny your Lord. These other beliefs, they do not know God, because they do not have God's only begotten Son. Begotten, not created. He is of the Father. He is God the Son. And he came to the earth to save us in him. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7-9 and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. I don't say these things because... They're just my opinion. This is the word of God and it must be preached in the truth. Those who do not know Jesus Christ are not saved. Their souls are destined for the lake of fire. Judgment is real. Do not deny that the Lord will judge the earth. I've seen many do this. And they deny the character and attributes of the Lord, his righteousness, and that his judgment is righteous on this wicked world. If the gospel of Jesus Christ is not obeyed, and those who do not know God, Jesus Christ, vengeance will be taken upon them. This is what the word tells us. It's not what I'm telling you. So no, we don't have anything to do with other religions, there is one truth, that is God's truth, what he has communicated to us. And there is one saviour. I'm not saying in any way to have hate for anyone, nor for any faith, nor any of these people, nor those in darkness in the world. But do not stand for the new world order merging of all faiths into one, saying that they all worship God, that all paths lead to God. No, it's actually not true. If you read the Bible, it's very clear that that's not true. They don't have the Son, Jesus Christ. They don't obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they don't have God the Father, and they don't have God. The word is clear. Heed no false prophets or wolves in sheep's clothing of this world. Romans 12, 9 to 21. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. 
patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It is good to consider these things and do them. Note that we are to abhor evil. This means to hate evil. We don't hate those practicing evil, but we hate their evil deeds. We are to stand firm against evil. James 4, 7. Therefore submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Lord hates evil, but he does not hate those who practice it. Revelation 2, 6. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. We are to love our neighbor, and this includes loving our enemies. For we recognize that we ourselves were saved from certain death and condemnation by the grace of God. Those who are in darkness, as we once were, do not know the truth of God and his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. But the powerful thing with darkness is that you don't know that you are in darkness. You believe that you are in the light, completely, justified, reasonable in your own eyes. That's how I felt. That's how I used to feel. You are simply in the dark as to the truth. The truth of what is good and evil. The truth of God. And in this world, I'm sure you can see it. But we are in those days where evil is called good and good is called evil. We're at Matthew 24, 12, it says, Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Sin abounds greatly in this wicked world. I myself was in darkness to so many things until I found the way, the truth and the life in Jesus Christ in the last year. I am so different from who I once was. My old man is gone and I am a new man. I fully feel the verse of being born again because now I can understand the things of God and the things of this world. God's word gave me the truth of what is good and evil. In the past, I believed I was fully justified in my actions and I did many things that were wrong, caused pain and hurt others and were against God. I didn't intend to hurt God, but because I was in darkness, I didn't know what the real truth was. I was just accepting things from the world, other people's opinions, their own standards, and whatever seemed right to me. When Jesus gave up his life and was nailed to the cross, he said at Luke 23, 34, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. This is truly the case for the world gripped in darkness and evil. We must have compassion. We must have love to save as many as possible. You can be under the influence of demonic spirits, the spirit of the Antichrist, and have no idea about it. You feel justified in all your words and actions and are thus always finding reasons and ways to justify evil deeds, evil thoughts, evil lusts, emotions and desires. You will not consider them evil, as I didn't. But sadly, this is how it is when you are under the grip of darkness, under the grip of the ruler of this world. 
you do not have the eyes to see the truth of your actions and the truth of the world. The beautiful and vital gift of the Bible, the Word of God, through all of the prophets, is to give us the real truth, written 2,000 years ago, fully applicable and relevant right to this day. As the Bible says, there is nothing new under the sun. We are given the real truth. What is right and wrong, which is according to to the highest divine spiritual truth. This is God's truth. There is no other God. This is why when aligning myself with God and seeking to abide in Him and His Word, I confess to so many things I did under darkness, under error, and not in the truth of God. The Word lets us know what is acceptable to God, and what shall not come into the kingdom of heaven, and what is good, and what is evil in this world. Sin does not exist in heaven. Jesus Christ paid by the blood of his life, his sacrifice to wipe away all sin, all our sins and the sins of the world. Yet without faith in him, or even with faith, if we continue in our sins, we deny his own sacrifice for us, and there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but hellfire awaits. Sadly, this will be the case for many in the church, who are those considered to be lukewarm, lawless, and other descriptions by Jesus of the seven spirits of the churches prophesied in the revelation of Jesus Christ, which apply strongly and profoundly to this day and age, the status of the church. Jesus says, among other things, that as a church in whole, parts of us have fallen and left our first love, God. And we should repent and do the first works, or our lampstand will be quickly removed. That we have the spirit of Balaam teaching stumbling blocks before the children, eating food sacrificed to idols, sexual immorality, and should repent, or the Lord will come at them quickly with the sword of his mouth. We have the spirit of Jezebel teaching sexual immorality, eating things sacrificed to idols, who know the depths of Satan, and God will kill these children of Jezebel in the church. We have those who are considered alive, having a good reputation, but are spiritually dead, and are told to repent. When speaking of one of the seven churches, Jesus says, Only a few of this whole church have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with the Lord in white, for they are worthy. The angel of the church in Philadelphia, the Lord says they have a little strength, have kept his word, and have not denied his name. Because they have kept the Lord's command to persevere, he will keep them from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world. We are told in Revelation 3, 11, Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. We are told to hold fast to the Lord, so that our crowns are not taken. Keep his word, abide in him, and not fall away from our first love, God, who is Jesus Christ, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. The last angel of the Church of Christ is described at Revelation 3, 15 to 19. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed. And the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. This is the Lord's prophecy of the church. His body, the body of Christ, also applying to the end days, the days in which we live right now. We know from the Lord's word that many Christians will be considered as lawless when they face the Lord for judgment in that day. 
the day of the Lord. And this means there are many branches in the vine of Christ that are withered, not producing fruit, and will be gathered to be burned. They will face hellfire. The word I have shared with you is abundantly clear. The Lord is calling his church to repentance. I sound this trumpet of warning that we should all purify ourselves before God and repent. Come away from the world and remember our first love. When Jesus says he counsels us to buy from him white garments so that we may be clothed to cover the shame of our nakedness. This means when we aren't purified and in a white garment, we are in nakedness before the Lord. This is being in sin, but not realizing it. Being in darkness without fully submitting to and seeking the Lord. He says, we need eye salve so that we can see. Meaning, we have fallen into a spiritual slumber, a blindness. We are in darkness and have a dire need for purification and repentance. This is the call of the Lord to his church, to many in the church. And I hear it loud and clear and have tried to set my whole focus to these things, to improve in the Lord, to come away from the world and to purify myself before him. I share these things with you as a call to arms for the church, that we must be zealous and repent, purify ourselves from sin, seek the Lord and his word, and we will purify our garments by our Lord's grace, and we can be considered to be part of the true holy, in white, clean and righteous bride of Christ, arrayed in the wedding garment representing our spiritual cleanliness from sin and the wicked world and our devotion to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Bridegroom. As he is faithful and loving to us, so should we be to him. There is very little time left. I am strongly strongly warning you that God's judgment is at the door. Now, I've done a video on the rapture and why I believe there will be a post-tribulation rapture when Christ returns at the end of the tribulation and that all believers being taken in the pre-tribulation rapture, as many teach, is false in the word of God. I will now shortly expand this to you. I do absolutely believe there will be a rapture or gathering at the end of the tribulation, as is stated in Matthew 24, 29 to 31, and Mark 13, 24 to 27, after the tribulation of those days, as it is said in the word. However, I now believe there will be a rapture of the bride of Christ before the tribulation. Those who have kept the word of God and have not denied his name, who will be kept from the hour of trial that comes upon the whole world. I previously believed this only meant being kept from harm on earth during the tribulation, but I now believe, given the Lord's words, that he is coming to get his bride at an hour and time they will not know. And also the fact that the army the Lord returns with at Armageddon is an army of the saints. I believe they make up the raptured bride, and those who subsequently remained on earth, but held fast to the Lord and were purified in the tribulation. The Revelation 2.10 Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The rapture of the bride, I believe, will be first. And this will be those in the body of Christ who have purified themselves before the Lord, a clean and spotless bride, arrayed in white for the bridegroom. Not all of the church have answered the call to the marriage supper. Matthew 22:10 to 14 So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all who they found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests... He saw a man who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
for many are called, but few are chosen. So, without a wedding garment, you could not be at the wedding. Many are called to the wedding, but few are chosen. What I am saying is that many of the Christians today would not be considered to be the holy, righteous, in white, clean and pure bride of Christ. They have defiled garments. I believe that only the bride will be raptured before the tribulation, which is imminent. Those who have lost their first love, God, are in sin and are in need of repentance, are not the bride of Christ, and unless they purify themselves before God by abiding in Him and His Word, separating themselves from the world, being free from sin, they will not be raptured before the tribulation. Only the bride who had oil in their lamp is taken. However, this is not the end of the church on the earth, which is why I still believe in a post-tribulation rapture, as well as potentially even a mid-tribulation rapture. We know after the sixth seal of the great tribulation, there is a great multitude from the earth before the throne in heaven, arrayed in white robes. They are said at Revelation 7.14. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So they made their robes white through the tribulation. We know the bride is already white and clean and has been waiting on the Lord. This clearly shows to me the bride is separate and I believe already taken off the earth at that point. Whether those in Revelation 7.14 are raptured or die on the earth, it still represents a harvest of the Lord, of his church upon the earth. The bride was ready and was taken in the first harvest. The second harvest, the Lord took those believers who were on the earth who were not fully yet purified to be the bride, but they purified their robes through the great tribulation as we are told in Revelation 7.14. The final harvest is of those who are alive and remain. This is the final gathering of his elect from the earth's four corners. To me, this makes the most sense, as the Lord is trying to save as much of his church as possible and bring as many who are willing out of darkness. I believe even if the bride is raptured, Some may come to the earth to do the Lord's will in this time. I believe there will be saints on the earth during the entire tribulation period doing God's will. When the Lord returns at Armageddon, he returns with an army of saints who do battle against the kings and armies of the earth, Satan, the beast, and the false prophet, defeating them. The bride and those who are who purified their robes in the great tribulation, will be a part of this army. So by this I still stand firm that all believers will not be taken in a pre-tribulation rapture. Many or most will not be, having hidden sin, unpurified garments, abiding in sin, not abiding in the Lord and His Word, and will, be, and will not be taken as the Lord's pure, holy and righteous bride. However, through the tribulation, many will be purified and will most likely be raptured after the sixth seal, the great earthquake. Why I say raptured and not killed and go to the Lord is that there is a great multitude of all nations, tongues before the throne. We have no idea on time frames, but it happens immediately after the sixth seal, which is the great earthquake across the whole earth. And they could have died in this earthquake, or they could have been taken by the Lord. Either way, we have a vast multitude from all nations who appear before the throne of God in white robes, who have purified themselves through the great tribulation, washing their robes and making them white in the blood of the Lamb. The bride of Christ is waiting for their bridegroom and will be a pure and spotless bride when the Lord comes for them. I believe for these reasons there will be three harvests of the church, all gathered in Christ. 
one rapture of the bride of Christ, of those who and of those who are purified during the tribulation, either by death or being taken, and finally the rapture or gathering after the tribulation of those days, the gathering of all the elect on the earth in Christ. Why I say these things is that I believe the great tribulation is at our doorstep. God's judgment on the earth is imminent. We should all purify ourselves before the Lord and seek to be his pure and holy bride. I'm not saying I know of myself. Even if I am still on the earth, I will hold fast to the Lord and will not deny his name unto my death. And if I hold firm, I know I will receive the crown of life. The problem with most teachings of the rapture is that it is an all believers taken in the pre-tribulation rapture, saying no believers currently will ever see the tribulation. This does not focus on purification and holiness. It doesn't focus on being the bride of Christ. It says everyone's taken, no one will suffer. This is not true, as not all who hold faith in Jesus Christ are his bride. Not all believers in Christ have the characteristics of the bride. This is clearly seen by the state of the church Jesus calls to repentance in the first three chapters of the Revelation. There will be a large amount of Christians left from the first rapture. I don't presume to expect or say my position either way. It's up to the Lord. I am ready for whatever happens. But I am earnestly seeking to purify myself before the Lord with all of my effort, as I know that time is incredibly short. I've been given so many signs about this. Many of those on the earth during the Great Tribulation will be purified and their garments made white. There will be many roles and tasks to fulfill on the earth during this time. Remember, our lives by our faith in the Lord, repenting and turning from sin, are guaranteed in God. Our greatest task is to save those in darkness, those we should have great love for, the unsaved who do not know the truth, to save them and to ensure a great harvest of believers in Christ from the earth. Every soul saved is a new family member in heaven. James 5.20 let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul and cover a multitude of sins. No matter what happens in the future, hold fast to your faith. Seek the Lord constantly and abide in him and his word, doing his will and not your own on the earth. Unfortunately, many Christians haven't readied themselves for the coming and imminent judgment Many are not even aware that judgment is about to fall, as many have not expected to suffer. If they are not considered by the Lord as his ready bride and taken, they may fall away and renounce God in the tribulation. But many will hold fast and their robes will be purified. But we as a church as a whole should be prepared and readying ourselves for whatever happens, not expecting that we are in a position to be taken. That's the Lord's decision. There will be... Sorry, 2 Timothy 4, 3-4. to four. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. There will be terrible persecution coming for Christians. We are warned in the word. We will be hated by all nations and there will be saints beheaded for not accepting the mark of the beast. The beast will make war against the saints and overcome them and the dragon makes war against all those who hold the commandments of Jesus. This is in the Revelation. We are all warned of this to come, and it is very soon to be. Jesus' words at Matthew 16.25 apply strongly to the coming times and the separation from the world that we should take 
in not partaking of its evil. He says, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. If you desire to save your life and accept the mark of the beast by fear of death in the flesh, you will lose your soul and be tormented in the lake of fire forever and ever, as explained in the Revelation 14, 9 to 11. If you lose your life for the sake of the Lord, if you refuse to deny Jesus even if they kill you, you will lose your life in the flesh, but your soul will live and you will find life for all eternity with God. I know the truth of these things. I know the truth of God. I tell you only from my experiences, and that's all I can say to give my own testimony. Your faith is entirely up to you, as is your spiritual relationship with the Lord. We all have our own story. This verse is very applicable to the end times. Also, that we must lose our lives that we had in this world, entangled in the lusts, attraction, wickedness and evil of the world. We must separate ourselves from these things, thus losing our former selves, our former lives, our old man and woman, who are nailed to the cross, and to be born again, in a new wineskin, with a new spirit, with God the Father, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, and the Holy Spirit with us. We are to be dead to our old lives and dead to sin, thus losing our former lives and gaining our life in the Lord. This verse is amazing. I love the Word of God. It is so rich. The truth oozes from it. It is amazing. I am so thankful to the Lord for bringing me from the darkness, saving me from certain death. It was so gross not knowing what was the truth and what good and evil really is. It was a long journey in my life, but I am overjoyed and so blessed to be who I am now in Christ. I tell you all of these things, my brothers and sisters, only to encourage you, as I love you and I want the best for you. You have an amazing destiny. We all do, if we choose to answer the call of God in our lives. Now, Christians, the Church of Christ, we must ready ourselves for the difficulties spelled out in the Word. While we are not the targets of the Lord's wrath on the wicked, we must purify ourselves, be zealous and repent. I prefer myself to not assume I will be taken by the Lord, but I will most certainly be awaiting Him with my lamp full of oil, not slum slumbering, or drunk, but sober and awake, for he is due to come at any time. He is coming soon. But even if we are not taken, do not lose hope. The great promise is that if you hold fast in your faith unto your death, even through tribulation, you will receive the crown of life and be with God forevermore. There is much to do on the earth in bringing those from darkness. We are the light of this world, as the Lord tells us. We are the salt of the earth. We are His church, and we should not lose our flavor. I am calling the whole church to strongly seek the Lord in earnest, as His judgment on the earth is about to fall. I know this for certain. The Lord has shown me so many times in dreams. We must be holy, purify ourselves, be the bride of Christ the fruitful branch who abides in the Lord and His Word. We must free ourselves from the evil of this world and repent and turn away from all sin. We are not to be compromising with the Word of God. The Word of God is the Word of God. Let the world hate us. Jesus told us it will be so. So why are you surprised? Don't give in to their demands. Many teachers are ignoring repentance eternal damnation, the coming judgment and sanctification before the Lord. It does nobody any good to be preaching only prosperity when judgment is at the door and we are called to be holy and set apart. We are not to make idols of the world and the worldly things, but to gain our treasures in heaven 
which will never rust or be destroyed. The saving of souls is vital, not saving them to a compromised gospel of another, but to the true, holy, and just gospel of Jesus Christ. We are told to hate evil, but what do many do? By fear and compromise, give in to evil. This is unacceptable to alter the true gospel. We are told by Jesus in Mark 8, 38. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Do not be ashamed of the word of God. We are under attack. I know this very well. This world calls good evil and evil good. Do not compromise with evil. Hold fast to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And even if they beat you, mock you, taunt you, ridicule you, imprison you or kill you, trust in the Lord. Your glory is in heaven with God, not in this world. We are told in 1 Peter 4.12, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. And at 16. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? I used to be ashamed of taking the name Christian based on what I could see in the world. But I know to not be ashamed of the word of God. The word of God says, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. So I'm not going to be ashamed of that title. I want to be a true Christian to the Lord. I want to grow to be his true bride. And I want to grow to be one with the Lord. As he has told us, if we seek him, he will make his home within us. So when I explained before and read the parable of the vine and branches, Jesus tells us to bear fruit, we must abide in him and the word. John tells us in 1 John 3, 6, whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has not, has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he has been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. It is clear to abide in the Lord we must not be abiding in sin. We aren't perfect. We are in the flesh, and we will still make mistakes, be tempted, and can sin. But do not abide in sin. Know that Jesus told us if our eye or foot causes us to sin, to cut it off, or we will not make it into the kingdom of God. This should be clear that sin is not acceptable to God for salvation, and there are no excuses to continue in sin. Now, what exactly are the sins we should be clear from? Here are some verses. Ephesians 5, 3-5 But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, 
nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once in darkness, but now you are in light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Colossians 2, no, 3, 2 to 10. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So covetousness is called idolatry. Covetousness is jealousy, lusting after the things of the world. That is directly called idolatry right here. That means forming an idol that you desire before God. And this is many, many things in the world. Many things we can look to in most of our lives and, and find this to be true. So this call to being holy before the Lord it should be made to the whole church and we should all be trying to be closer to the Lord and improve in our own way, in our own journey in Christ. 1 James 12 to 16 Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Revelation 21.8 but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. We know from the Ten Commandments to not have any other gods before the Lord our God. To not make idols and worship them. This can be anything that stops us from abiding in God and His Word as a fruitful a fruitful branch of the vine of Christ. We need to pull ourselves away from the worldly things. After growing in faith in Christ, I can't imagine doing the things I was doing. Spending hours and hours doing pointless things on TV, video games or laptop, when I could have even spent a small amount of that time seeking the Lord and reading His Word instead of ignoring Him. David Wilkerson wrote strongly about TV being an idol of the world, where we give our time and attention to evil and wickedness, thereby approving of it, giving our energy and time before the TV as an idol before God. He said the same with devoting ourselves to most music, sports, things of this nature. And to the extent that they stop us from being with God, I agree. I don't like many of these things anymore. On our phones the internet, we waste so much time where we could be developing our spiritual relationship with the Lord. 
I was so blessed recently to have an amazing sister in Christ speak with me and tell me her testimony, also bringing me a blessing from her and the Lord. Seeing how detached from the worldly things and how strong her relationship with Christ was really made me want to improve myself and seek the Lord earnestly. Her words and encouragement were incredibly helpful to me, and I thank the Lord greatly. Separation from the world is spoken of in 1 John 2, 15-17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Honouring our mother and father, do not murder, do not steal, not taking the Lord's name in vain, not committing adultery, not becoming or not bearing false witness, and not coveting anything that is your neighbor's. This is jealousy and goes to desiring the things of the world when we should be content. The commandments are embodied in Matthew twenty two thirty six to forty. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it, at like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. By following these two laws, so these two commandments to love, we follow all of the law, since if we are truly loving, we will not break. These are the things. We know the Lord strongly disapproves of divorce. Matthew 19, 19. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. We know Jesus told us to lust after another spouse is to commit adultery of the heart. Now, I am certainly not saying I have not sinned. I have sinned greatly before the Lord. I was on the path to death. Even since coming to Christ, I realized I had more sins I had not realized and accepted. For these, I had to understand that my actions were sinful, and I apologized in spirit to all of the people I had wronged. I told them I was sorry that I hurt them, and sought their forgiveness and that of the Lord's. I realized I had built up anxiety about these things in my past, where I had hurt people and felt sorry for doing that. I sought forgiveness for all the things I did to selfishly and negligently hurt people and God that I could remember. After doing this, I felt a strong sense, like a weight of anxiety lift off me, like I could accept more of the Lord's peace in my heart because I didn't have that anxiety within me still. I also looked to my actions in the past and recently and tried to understand what was sinful or not abiding in the Lord. I changed a number of different behaviours. I noticed I was already growing away from the worldly things and more towards the Lord, but seeking to be pure in the eyes of the Lord and free from sin. Dealing with any past and present sin in my life has been such a rewarding thing for me. My beautiful sister in Christ recommended I do this, and to also forgive all others, release attachments of others on my soul with love, which can form from close or intimate relationships, and release any attachments I have to others. This made a lot of sense to me, as the Bride of Christ is a pure and holy bride for Jesus, the Bridegroom. Nothing should be getting in the way of that. I suppose you could say, I have been cleaning my spiritual house recently with zeal and fervor, for I strongly believe the time is short until the Lord's judgment upon the earth. Interestingly, I had also been doing a lot of physical cleaning recently, which tied in, which is also humorous to me. 
I realize that to be holy to the Lord means we must embody this verse. Matthew 10, 37 to 39. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. We must bear our cross of self-sacrifice. This is self-denial to the lusts and attractions of the world and our former selves once we are born again. Galatians 6, 7-8 Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Galatians 5, 16 to 25. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you, I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So we, in order to walk in the Spirit and its attributes, must crucify our flesh, bear our cross, denial of the temptations of the flesh, because the spirit and the lusts of the flesh are totally opposed. I am saying these things because I only fully understand. I've only fully understood and sought to purge myself from the things, these things recently. It is not something that can be done without the truth of the word, the Holy Spirit and self-reflection and analysis. To be holy as the Lord's bride is, we must be walking after spirit, not after flesh and the world. Exactly what I am trying to say has already been said. Let me read it. James 4, 4 to 10. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. The Spirit of God within us, who believe in Jesus, is jealous when we pay attention to flesh instead of spirit. But he gives us grace when we are humble and repent of our sins before him. We need to cleanse ourselves from all sin, being holy and not double-minded, drawing near to God and he will do so to us. 
I can tell you the absolute truth of this. Not long ago, recently near the time of my last video, I had some shocking dreams relating to the unattended sin. Lust and evil within my heart. These things are still issues for me that I am working on. My problem earlier was that I was being double-minded about it. I was thinking that I would try to stop because it felt bad, but I wasn't fully addressing the root of the issue that this behavior in the eyes of the Lord is sin. And I need to resolve myself to not... I need to resolve myself to do it for the Lord. During this time, I felt so weak, so much of a failure, so disgusting at times. But I kept my eyes on the Lord and thanked Him for these dreams which showed these things to me, which helped me to focus on this hidden sin in my heart and resolve it and purify myself before the Lord. I feel so much better. It is so amazing and profound to at least know of these things so that you can willfully oppose them is very important. But I felt so incredibly weak and horrible at times before, even recently, but I am growing more bold in my journey in Christ. These times of weakness will happen to us all. It is necessary to humble us to the Lord, for we are weak, but He is strong. The feeling of being overcome by your weakness and sinful heart, or the desires of your heart, even if you aren't acting out and sinning, it is a difficult thing to deal with. This is what it is like to struggle with sin. But when you honestly and openly understand that it is not good behavior for you or towards the Lord, His Spirit inside you, you can resolve to change and purify yourself. The Lord will give us grace when we sin, but if we keep sinning over and over again, abiding in sin, we risk becoming a withered branch in the Lord's vine. The Lord will forgive us if we repent with our heart and honestly try not to sin. Know that even our Lord God was tempted while in the flesh, so He understands. Hebrews 4.15 For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Know that the Lord's strength is made perfect in weakness. When we seek Him in humility, He will lift us up, just as James 4, 4-10 describes. Paul describes a persistent weakness that plagued him. I feel this too with certain thoughts that try to enter and reveal themselves to me. We should take heed, for our weaknesses remind us that we need to seek the Lord. He is our strength. He is the vine. Without Him we are nothing. Remember that. 2 Corinthians 12, 7-10 And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What an amazing verse. Know that it is not meant to be easy to deny yourself and resist sin and temptation. It can be very difficult. But once you do make progress, you will soon realize that you have no desire to do that anymore. And this desire of yours is gone has changed, and this part of you has become born again by spirit and your dedication to the Lord to bear your cross of self-sacrifice. When we give up for the Lord, when we give up the flesh and focus on the spirit, the Lord is greatly pleased. 
In this way, our spirit-to-spirit relationship with the Lord can grow. He drawing near to us as we cleanse ourselves, as described in James 4. No, I have felt incredibly weak, incredibly gross, disgusting, unworthy, but I kept my focus on the Lord, and He lifted me up. Looking back, I can only say that it was amazing. When you are weak, trust in the Lord as your strength. Keep focus on Him, and He will lift you up. Being pure before the Lord is loving God, loving others including our enemies in darkness, abiding in God and His Word, being as like a little child. Matthew 18, 3-4, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Not only being humble as a child, but a loving and pure as a child to our Lord. I had some difficulty earlier as I was seriously trying to improve my failures and was being so harsh on myself for the evil that I felt within my heart and my weaknesses, carrying this anxiety and burden with me during the day. I couldn't fully lift and experience the joy of the Lord and let it open up in my heart because of this. My sister in Christ told me to focus on the joy of the Lord as my strength. And I strongly believe it. I take any opportunity to find joy in the Lord, like being in nature, God's creation. I encourage you to give thanks daily, before meals, and pray to the Lord at least daily. Also sing to the Lord if you like to. I sing with my voice and in my head to the Lord, which I find really enjoyable. Since I have journeyed in purifying myself before the Lord, I have felt the strong increase in the Lord's peace within me. My confidence in the Lord, my ability to deal with temptation, and my ability to spend time easily with the Lord, enjoying it more and more, caring less about many of the things of the world, and not desiring the things I used to, Totally a rejuvenating feeling. I am just sharing my experiences with you, if it may be of benefit to you. For myself, no matter how far I feel that I have come, it is always still a battle. There are periods of calm and peace, and periods of stress and testing. I know when I am weak, the Lord is strong, and His grace and love for me is enough. I will keep sight of Him. I have strongly decided this, and He will lift me up when I am weak. I know this. I have experienced this. But know that weakness and trials is a part of our journey. What does Jesus say many times in the first three chapters of the Revelation? He who overcomes. She who overcomes. We must be overcomers. And hold fast to the Lord as our mighty castle and fortress. Read Psalm 91, the Lord's provision, and Ephesians 6, 18 to, 6 10 to 18, and pray for the whole armor of God so you can stand against the devil's attempts against you. This can help you so much as it has me. This is real spiritual armor, it is very effective. It is no joke. The word of God is true. Pray for this and seek the Lord and renew and replenish your spiritual armor. Above all, abide in the Lord and his word, loving him with all of your heart, soul, mind and strength and all others as yourself, treating them with love, even your enemies. Though we should hate evil, hold fast and resist the devil and he will flee. Again, I say to you, the Lord's judgment is imminent upon the earth. Just look at the many signs poured out upon the earth. We have increasing natural disasters, volcanoes, earthquakes in diverse places, and increasing frequency. 
we have plagues, pestilences, we have famines, we have abnormal weather and seasons, strange animal behavior, mass fish, bird, bee, and other sea life deaths. We have rivers and lakes turning blood red. We have blood moons and other natural events before our eyes. Record flooding, fires. These are all signs that judgment is impending upon the earth. The frequency is ramping up. People of old would not have ignored these things, but we are so blind in this generation. We have the religion of scientism to explain everything away so people don't understand that these are signs of impending judgment by God that he is pouring out upon the earth so that we can repent. They are trying to keep us blind so we do not understand that we are certainly in the season. In the end days with the great tribulation at our doorstep. This way, with many blind, they are less likely to see the signs God has poured out and repent. Not only in the natural world, but in the world economy, we are on the verge of world economic collapse. Since the 2008 global... Uh, since the 2008 financial crisis, the world has only added trillions of debt. Banks and countries are on the verge of default, despite how much money they print to prop up the stock market. This puts everything on a timer, for when the economy goes, it will be unlike anything ever seen before. Our society changed in a moment, when everything ceases to operate due to the failure of the money, as has occurred and told to us in the Bible. They won't allow the blame to be put on those who are responsible, so we will likely see World War III spoken of in the first four seals of the Revelation, before or shortly after the economy collapse. These things are extremely close. Then we have military signs, the two biggest nuclear superpowers in the world at worst relations on the verge of war. We have troops all over being positioned for world war, Missiles being deployed, battle equipment positioned, large countrywide nuclear drills being conducted, nuclear drills for New York City. These things have been unprecedented in my life. The literal massive amount of signs of impending chaos, the impending judgment of God on this wicked world. Then we have the moral depravity. Worldwide, over 1.5 billion babies have been murdered in the womb. Abortion, a practice taught to mankind as early as the beginning by the fallen angels. If you read the book of Enoch, you can watch my video on it. The womb should be the safest place for the child. What father wouldn't risk or put their life on the line to protect their wife and unborn child? Yet, what do we do? We almost wholesale slaughter them and in many instances, their bodies are sold to the highest bidder. But science tells us it's okay because they aren't people. What a delusion. We have the normalization of homosexuality by law and transgenderism now being thrust into the spotlight. Denying how we are made by God as male and female. Teaching this wickedness to the children some being taught by drag queens in libraries, being sexualized to concepts they should never be exposed to at that age, learning of these sinful practices and how they are carried out in the school system. I used to not understand the problem with homosexuality, but I can see now where it leads to, the normalizing and teaching of this to young children. If you are homosexual, that is your own business, and we have all sinned before. It is clear that God does not approve of sexual immorality and homosexual behavior, which those who practice it will see the lake of fire for eternity. This being said, I know people who practice this, and I love them, and appreciate them and who they are. However, it is a sinful and lustful so it is a lustful sin, and it should not be practiced for those seeking to do right by God. Just as fornication, adultery, are sins that should not be practiced. But we must all deny our flesh and seek to bring our bodies 
and our spirits in line with God. I'm not sugarcoating or compromising the word of God. It is an unacceptable practice to God and will lead to eternal damnation. However, your faith is your own choice. I have no hate at all for those who practice these things. I only hope for them in their redemption from sin and darkness to the true light and life of God. This is now being used as a weapon against the true church. Those believers in Jesus Christ and the word of God now being called bigoted and hateful. The Bible is close to being outlawed as hate speech, for even speaking these things is now grounds for imprisonment, job loss, and many other things in certain cases. Look at the recent faith of Christianity being put on trial by US politician Bernie Sanders, making his own requirements for public office that you can't believe that Christ is the only saviour. This is a disgraceful attack on Christians. We now see the Pope, Muslim leaders, Jewish leaders, and the Dalai Lama are all coming together to make friends, as they say. These are all false prophets. The only salvation is Jesus Christ. The Pope is a clear wolf in sheep's clothing. Look at some of the things he has said which deny Christ and the word of God, though he does promote the Muslim faith. The Vatican is built on tombs of bones. The Roman Catholic Church, they have a giant Satan snake building as clear as day and huge demonic hellscape artwork before the congregation. I took one look and I knew what it was. Truly disgusting and repulsive. The New World Order religion prophesied in the Bible is soon to rise. We can see the signs clearly. They will call Christians hateful, bigoted, any name under the sun. We will be hated by all nations for his name's sake, for Jesus Christ's sake. This is coming. We know the world will worship the dragon and the beast. They are soon to emerge as we are on the verge of the great tribulation. What else do we have? We have many who say they believe in God the God of the Bible, but deny that Jesus Christ is God. He came on the earth as man and God, Emmanuel, God is with us, and was glorified into his full status after he gave up his life on the cross and was resurrected to save the world. God is three parts and is one God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Trinity, the nature of God revealed to us through the Word of God. Almost all other faiths and sects other than Christianity deny the sovereignty of Jesus Christ as God, the I Am, the Almighty Heavenly Father. Deniers of the Holy Trinity and deniers that Jesus is God deny the Son, so they deny the Father. Without the Son, you do not have the Father. This is clear in scripture. Those who have fallen under deception and deny the Lord God Jesus Christ, the only saviour for mankind. By denying he is God, they reject God the Father and they have hellfire awaiting them. It is that vital of a concept and it is spoken of strongly by John, who calls deniers of the Son, those are carrying the spirit of Antichrist. These are the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Jews, and other groups who claim faith in the God of the Bible, but deny Jesus Christ, thus denying the integral part of God's nature as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If they deny Jesus, they deny the Word of God, as the Word was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through the Word and upheld by the Word. The Word is Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. The bread of life. No man goes to the Father but through Him, the Son of Man. Jesus Christ will commit all judgment on the earth, and all will appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give account of their lives after death. Don't be fooled. Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord and King and is one with His Father and the Holy Spirit. Denying Jesus is God is a critical 
and condemning failure. As spoken of in the Word, those who carry the spirit of Antichrist and do not have God the Father. If you want more scriptural evidence, see my video titled Jesus is God, Christ Deniers Be Warned. I made that video specifically on this topic. Deniers of Jesus don't know the truth and are in darkness. The name of Jesus has power over demons. Know this. All will bow before Jesus Christ, those above, those on the earth and those beneath. This means the holy angels and all mankind and all demons underground and Satan himself. Jesus is the Almighty. Do not be deceived. Otherwise, but yes, while on the earth, he was a man and God and not yet fully glorified into his power when he came to give up his life on the earth. If you deny that Jesus is God, I implore you to awaken from your grave heresy. I only say this out of love for your soul, because I know the truth of Jesus, and he is certainly God. Now, what is also occurring strongly in the world is all manner of seeking after spiritual things that are not truth and do not lead you to truth, but lead you to darkness and death for your soul. This is sorcery, astrology, which is reading star signs, interpreting spirits, psychic readings, fortune tellers, palm readers, tarot cards, dream catchers, lucky charms, luck rituals, mediums who supposedly communicate with dead spirits, which is not true, they're communicating with demons. Channeling beings, witchcraft, casting spells, all of this is of the devil and leads you to death. Do not participate in it, do not give your consent to it, do not view it or watch it. This goes for Ouija boards, Psychics, people who supposedly are contacting spirits from other dimensions or alleged angels who are not God or the Holy Spirit, they are deceived by demons. I tell you assuredly, clearly and with no doubt, stay clear of these things as they are hated by God. I, In participating in these things, you are seeking of the devil and not of God. I warn you now that you hear my words and purify yourself of this darkness, if you are involved in these things. Whatever questions you have, or whatever you desire to know, pray to God, and do not seek after the many ways you will find the devil, not God. I warn you here and now, hellfire awaits those of the devil who dabble in these things. This includes magic, astral projection, channeling spirits, and all other fake light, New Age trash, which is deception from Satan, which leads you away from Jesus Christ for salvation and remission of sins. I've been into this stuff before. That's why I'm telling you. I considered myself spiritual after I was an atheist. But I am now a born-again, Bible-believing Christian who believes the Word of God is the truth. And the things of the world are lies. And I see the wicked deception in things now. I see so many clever deceptions um, and the alluring lusts of this spiritual candy that is offered in the world. The ascension, the light energies, everything will be great. You will never have to suffer or bear your cross of self-sacrifice. They don't believe in heaven or hell. They believe in continual spiritual ascension through dimensions with no death or judgment. They believe in soul reincarnation, which is not true. They copy, rip off, and steal concepts from the Bible, like you reap what you sow, and hollow them out and remove the substance of the word, and have the appearance and semblance of the truth, but are hollow, shallow, self-focused, trying to turn yourself into God, like the trap of Buddhism. Ignoring the grace and sacrifice of God to save us. They don't acknowledge true spiritual wickedness. Satan, the present ruler of this world, 
but everything is focused on spiritual candy of bliss, bliss, self-focus, hollow teachings, but the candy is poison, which will lead to the death of your soul. I speak strongly about these things because I was deceived before, and I thank God greatly for bringing me to the truth. Know that God is not just loving. Oh, he is. He loves even sinners and wants all to be saved by faith in him, Jesus Christ. But he gave up his life so we could be saved from sin and our sins forgiven so we could be perfected and purified in white robes able to enter the kingdom of God where there is no sin. Do you really think God takes everyone off the earth, the wicked and sinners, and lets them into a realm of heavenly purity untouched by sin? I think not. Heaven would become as the earth. That is why the path to life is narrow and entered by the narrow gate, and the path to destruction is broad and entered by the wide gate, and many enter down it. Do not be deceived. God shall judge this world, and those who turn from his holiness, seeking after demons, devils, and Satan, the lusts of the flesh, and hate his holiness and his law, doing as they will, heed not the sinners and the wicked, the ungodly, who shall face hellfire and be destroyed off the earth. It is not the desire of God that any should perish, nor is it my desire or any of the church that any should perish. But he gave us free will to choose to accept or reject him and bear the consequences of our choices, heaven or hell. Heaven with God for eternity or hell and eternal punishment in the lake of fire. I tell you the truth. This is from the word of God. This is not me speaking here. Do not say you were warned. Do not say you were not warned. God is the righteous judge. He is fair and impartial. This world lies under the sway of the wicked one, as we are told in the word. Heed not the words of science, which is really scientism. Heed not any who supposedly bring you truth. But do not confess Jesus Christ as God and Savior. How can they teach you when they themselves are in darkness? This is what Jesus said of the Pharisees. I am sick of this, and I see how many are on the edge of the cliff and about to perish in this world. I'm not going to hold back anymore about saying what's on my mind and what I know the word of God says. I'm going to speak the truth. Take it or leave it, brothers and sisters. Do not say, I didn't warn you. I did, and I love you so much and hope for you. Elevate nothing before God and his word in this world, not even your life. Remember always the Holy Spirit is in you and stand fast to the Lord God, Jesus Christ, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Abide in Jesus, and he will abide with you. God is with us. Fear not, and stand firm against any enemy in Jesus' name. Jesus is with you and at your back. Know the promises of God are true. Hold fast to Jesus, and you will live forevermore. Beware of those who distort the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many in this world who deny the truth. Under the grips of Satan, the wicked one, many are falling away in their faith, but you must stand firm if you have tasted this truth, the truth of the Lord, and not turn your back on it, or you will sorely regret it. I say these things as much to you, I say them to myself. I say these things out of love for you, my brethren, my brethren in Christ and my brethren of this world who are in darkness, as I was for most of my life. What other signs are there of the Lord's impending judgment that we have? The emergence of Satanism into the open. No longer hidden. Satanic after-school programs in some government schools. For the children. 
cannibalism shoved down everyone's faces in all manner of media, fear and programming by the idol television, sexualization of the children, normalization of pedophilia. That's a big thing they will push for. We have pornography, mountains of disgusting things pumped out daily in the world, all manner of violence, lack of morality, desire for blood in sports, constant focus on money, material goods and material success. We have so many things I can't even mention. The alien deception growing stronger, getting us ready for the fake alien disclosure and revealing which are really the demonic fallen angels. We have massive divorce rates, teenage pregnancy. Times have changed and many people aren't marrying early and having families anymore. And this creates a lot of broken families with a lot of teenage pregnancies. So the children end up suffering. There are many reasons for why God gives us the guidance he does by his word. It is for our benefit, not to restrict us. It is so that we stay on the path of life. There are so many things I can't even mention, not to mention the lies of the globe earth. There is no curve. The earth is flat as God made it. There is a firmament above us, a dome. Heaven is above that. The heavens and the earth, that's it. The lies of the climate change, lies of evolution, Lies of vaccines, lies of space, NASA. There are just too many, but these are not my focus. These are not what I'm focused on. These are not what is important at the end of the day. But at this point, you should realize the incredible deceptions in the world. Just look at what the Bible and the book of Enoch, which is quoted from in the Bible. Just look at what they tell us is the truth. And then look at what the world tells us is the truth. You should see that good, as told to us in the Bible, is called evil in this world. And evil in the Bible is called good. We are in days of increasing lawlessness and decreasing love and compassion. This is why I say judgment is at the door. These are only some of the signs. I myself have received many different dreams on the coming end times and God's judgment upon the earth. I have read dreams of fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who have had many dreams which correlate strongly. We are on the verge of the Great Tribulation, the next world war, one world government, appearance of the Antichrist beast and dragon, who will rule the world, who the whole world will worship and will make war against the saints. The mark of the beast and one world trade system is coming. Do not take the mark of the beast or worship the beast or the image of the beast under any, any circumstances, even death, or you will burn in the lake of fire for all eternity. The mark of the beast is on the hand or the forehead, we are told in the word. The beast's number is 666. Beware of that. So this mark on the hand or the forehead is likely, it could be an injection, microchip, or electronic tattoo, something like that. These are what people are having dreams about. And there's a lot of uh, talk about chipping humans now with RFID chips. These are signs that you should be aware of. Do not accept the mark of the beast under any circumstances. After this, what is coming and spelled out in the revelation, great earthquakes, demons coming upon the earth, roaring oceans, plagues, disasters, and the eventual return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at the end of the tribulation at Armageddon to defeat the beast, dragon, and false prophet, and kings and armies of the earth with the holy saints in battle. I do believe the Lord is coming for his bride. Those who are not taken as the bride will be purified during the tribulation and make their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. But there will be many that fall away from the faith. These times are upon us. Very soon, we may not have internet and electricity anymore. We, not be, we may not be able to talk to each other, to learn and communicate. 
as we can now. It is very important that you have a Bible. We are on the verge of world war, the beginning of the seven seals of God's judgment on the earth. Hold fast to the Lord. Whether we are raptured or not, we keep our sights on the Lord and do His will on the earth and in heaven. The prophecies in the book of Revelation about the fall of Babylon, I believe, is prophesying the destruction of America. I have dreamt about invasion of the US by Russia and China and nuclear strikes on the country. When someone has known God and turns from him, punishment is greater than one who never came to the truth. This is the case with the United States. I read a book from Daniel Wil uh, David Wilkerson recently that my kind brother told me about and his history as a preacher. I'll try to link this book below in the description, a PDF that you can read. I saw that he believed the United States was Babylon, prophesied to be destroyed in the end times in the book of Revelation. The great harlot and mother of abominations of the earth, who at Revelation 17 2 says, Whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. We are told that the beast, the satanic new world empire, will turn on the harlot and burn her with fire. Revelation 17, 16. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. The ten horns are the ten kings of the new world order. Desolate and naked seems to me the collapse of the economy in the United States. Consuming flesh could be taking her land and resources, and burning with fire could be the destruction by nuclear weapons. This is the vision from God that David Wilkerson received, that the United States would be destroyed by a first strike, massive nuclear destruction by Russia from the north, and won't fight back or resist, and her allies would surrender immediately. Revelation 18.8 Therefore her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And at 18.10, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. To be utterly destroyed by fire in one hour seems like nuclear weapons. This could also be the Lord raining fire from heaven, but it could very well be nuclear weapons. Also interesting is Revelation 18.21. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. I dreamt of war in the United States, invasion, nuclear strike, and a huge tsunami striking New York City, the East Coast, some 50 metres tall rolling down the streets. This would destroy everything on the coast affected by the tsunami, and Revelation says Babylon is destroyed also by tsunami. The USA has Hollywood, the music industry, and all other things that I believe fit the description of the harlot and her sins. They have the Statue of Liberty as an iconic figure in the image of the Masonic false god Isis, worshipped as a divine mother goddess, which is another reason why you should not worship the Virgin Mary, making her an idol before God. And it is said to have corrupted the earth with her fornication. Babylon. Now, I believe that this is likely the interpretation. I believe that the interpretation David Wilkerson took is correct. And it's likely correct. And it fits with the passages in the Revelation and the dreams that I have had. And I know that for a satanic new world empire, the destruction of America, a Christian nation who is now turning away from God, is probably high on their priorities. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, so you can take that as speculation.
but I know that God is about to judge the world. Jeremiah 25, 30 to 33. Therefore prophesy against them all these words and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He will roar mightily against his fold. He will give a shout as those who tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise will come to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead his case with all flesh. He will give those who are wicked to the sword, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, disaster shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the farthest parts of the earth. And at that day the slain of the Lord shall be from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented or gathered or buried, and they shall become refuse on the ground. This is the judgment that is coming to all nations. We are told in Luke 21, 36, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And Revelation 3, 10, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Whether we remain on earth or not, we are not the targets of the Lord's wrath. Read Psalm 91. If we are raptured or not, we know what to do. Abide in the Lord. Abide in His Word. Do not lose faith. Do not doubt. Love God with all of your heart, soul, mind and strength, our neighbours and even enemies. Hold fast and do not deny Jesus Christ or He will deny us if we truly deny Him. Stay true no matter what happens. Truly give your life to Jesus and leave all things in His hands. He is in control, not the devil. He is in control. He is God. He is one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Cast on Him your fears and anxieties, your worries, and He will lift you up. When weak, He is your strength. He is our teacher. He is our master. And He is loving to us. And we are His children. He is our faithful Father. Trust in Him. Believe and do not doubt. And separate yourself from the wickedness of the world. And purify yourself before the Lord. Repent of all sin and walk the holy spiritual path bearing your cross and following after Jesus, denying the flesh and trusting, hoping, loving in the Lord God Almighty, His love, His peace and His grace. Let us all seek to purify ourselves before the Lord, to desire all to be His spotless and pure bride. Revelation 18.4 And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. This is of Babylon, he is speaking, of the world. We must be separate from the evil of the world, or we will share with the world's sins. When I say these things, brothers and sisters, don't think that I have hate for any of my brethren on the earth, the brothers and sisters in Christ, or the brothers and sisters in darkness. Even those in sin and darkness, for I used to be the same. I know of the grip of darkness and not knowing the real truth. I have committed great sins against my brothers and sisters and against the Lord. My failures pile high and my sins wound me. But I confess them to the Lord and turn from them and seek his forgiveness, and the Lord heals me. I felt living in sins, and I've felt coming out and experiencing the truth. It is like being freed. The word is true when it tells us we were slaves of sin. But I know that God is true, and his word to us is true. I know the truth of heaven and the truth of hell, the lake of fire and the Lord's coming judgment. 
Lord Jesus sacrificed himself willingly on the cross to defeat the curse of sin and to save the world in him by all who come to faith in him may receive forgiveness for their sins and everlasting life. I only tell you these things, my brothers and sisters, so that we all may purify ourselves before the Lord and not neglect our spiritual relationships with the Lord in these end days, so close to the Lord's judgment on the earth. And my hope is that as many as possible of those who are unsaved may come to faith in Jesus Christ and be saved, truly born again, with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. The Lord came to call sinners to repentance, and I preach no hatred against any of you, my brothers and sisters, not against anyone on the earth. Your faith is your own choice. We all have free will to accept or to reject God and his word and to bear the consequences of that. I truly hope that as many can be saved from the evil in this world and spiritual darkness as possible and may find the way, the truth and the life in Jesus Christ. For truly, as Paul says, Romans 13, 12 to 14, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. I tell you and encourage you to now and often pray for the whole armor of God. As I told you before, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. We are told in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord wants us all to be saved and be with him in his, his kingdom. Heaven is a place of no sin, and to get there, you must not abide in sin and have faith in Jesus Christ, who paid the cost of your redemption himself by his shed blood to forgive all of our sins, the sins of the world, perfecting us in him who have faith in him before his Father in heaven. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ with your mouth today. Save your soul. So truly, in these days, the call of Jesus and John the Baptist is more important than ever. At the eve of death, evil, chaos, and the Lord's judgment upon the earth, I say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let us all purify ourselves before the Lord, myself included. Let us abide in him and his true word. Let us separate ourselves from this world, bear our crosses, and be holy and free from sin for the Lord, as we await the soon coming of our beloved Bridegroom, our holy and mighty Saviour, the Prince of Peace, mighty God, everlasting Father, the I Am, the Almighty God, Lord God Omnipotent, the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and Omega, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Redeemer of Israel, Lord Jesus Christ, who is one with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Our Lord and God, our mighty King is returning. Fear not what is coming upon the earth. Hold fast to the true promises of our faithful Messiah, who loves us beyond our imagining. I love you dearly, my brothers and sisters. Let us all continue to grow in the Lord. 
let us all seek the Lord with all of our hearts. Beloved brethren, we will all be together with the Lord soon. I thank you for hearing me. I bless you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Your brother, Christopher. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. Holy, 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 Lord my God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come.